ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله ارسله الله الى الناس كافه بشيرا ونذيرا فبلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته ودعا بدعوته إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما احبتي في الله وفي الاسلام اوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله والاحسان فان الله مع الذين اتقوا والذين هم محسنون my beloved brothers and sisters i start by praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending blessings and salutations upon our beloved messenger muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us many opportunities throughout the year of ibadah and worship. We, it wasn't too long ago when we were in the month of Ramadan and alhamdulillah Allah gave us the opportunity to fast six days of shawwal and now we are entering or have entered into another month and this month is a sacred one, Dhul Qa'da and that it will be followed up with two other sacred months, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. And it is important that as Muslims, just as we appreciate and understand the importance, the value of the places Allah has blessed, like the Haram Sharif, like Masjid Al-Aqsa, like the Mosque of the Prophet وسلم, and those blessed areas, similarly Allah has blessed certain times. And just as we know that we conduct ourselves in manners, in ways that are different when we are at the Haram, we should do the same when we enter into the holy months like we are entered into now, inshaAllah ta'ala. Ibn Abbas used to say that every good deed that you do in a sacred month and that is the next three months any good deed that you do in it is multiplied and similarly any sin that you do in it as well is seen as worse so keep that in mind inshallah ta'ala and understand that you are in a season of worship Dhul Hijjah is coming close the ten most beloved days to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are approaching and this is the way of the believer where you're always in a state of ibadah for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, as it relates to ibadah, the first thing that comes to mind or one of the things that comes to your mind is fasting and praying. But there is one particular ibadah that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is more beloved to Allah and if one does this particular act of worship, you will reach the level of the one who fasts in the day and prays at night. And that is having good akhlaq, husnul khuluq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said that with, with good character, you will reach the level of as-sa'im al-qa'im. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, the most beloved among you to me, the most beloved among you to me are those that have good akhlaq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said there are two things that will help the people enter Jannah the most. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said it is piety, taqwa, wa husnul khuluq and having good akhlaq. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said indeed the best of you are ahasinukum akhlaqa, those that have the best akhlaq. Ikhwani fillah, what you will find is this is something that is repeated a lot in our religion. You will find that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, bu'ith. I have only been sent to perfect the best of character. This is the message of Islam. This is how we should conduct ourselves and should be. Now, you hear this word a lot. Good character and good akhlaq. But what does it mean? When you hear this, ikhwani fillah, I want you to remember three things that you must embody. Three things that you must do. 
And if you are doing these three things, you have good akhlaq. Number one is kafful adha. It is to keep your harm away from others. Leave people be. Do not harm them with insults. Do not harm them in any way, shape, or form. Do not harm them physically. Do not harm them emotionally. Leave the people. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that the true Muslim is man salim al muslimun min lisanihi wa yadihi. It is the Muslim who the people are uh, safe from his tongue and his hands. So if you're insulting people, if you're talking harsh against them, if you're backbiting, then you do not have good akhlaq. And you are not among the best people, nor are you among those that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam loves. If you use profanities when you are speaking, if you can't control yourself when you're angry, if what comes out of you isn't good, then you do not have good akhlaq. And no matter what the excuse is, the Muslim the Muslim doesn't curse, doesn't insult. This is not how a believer operates. If you get angry at your children, and when you get angry at them, you hurl insults at your own children because you're angry, or your friends, or every other word is a profanity, you do not have good akhlaq. If you don't choose the best words possible, you do not have good akhlaq. Do not harm people and ensure that you are not harming them with your, physically, of course. And that also includes all types of physical abuse and all types of um, statements that you make. But also do not harm them with your heart by being jealous or envious or having su'u dhan. Every time someone says something, you think they mean the worst. Never having good thinking about them in a good way. And the believer excuses others. If someone says something to you, and it can mean many different things, perhaps he wanted to demean me, or perhaps he was just joking, or per use the best excuse for your brothers. This is good akhlaq. So you ensure that you st stay balanced and check yourself as it relates to your actions, your statements, and even what's happening in your heart. This is the first step of good akhlaq. The second step, ikhwani wa akhwati fi Allah, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what you do for the people. Tanfa'u nas You are helpful to others. You are the person they come to when they need help. They can rely on you. They can trust you with their secrets. They want to tell you if they are in need. You are accessible. You are easygoing. You are forgiving. You are helpful. You're there for your neighbors. You're there for your family. If you can help them financially, you will. If you can say a good word, you can. Allah says in the Quran, وَقُولُوا لِلنَّاسِ حُسْنًا And say to the people something good. وَقُلْ لَهُمْ قَوْلًا مَيْسُورًا إِخْوَانِ فِي اللَّهِ you have, If you want to be embodying good akhlaq, ask yourself, how helpful am I to others? How beneficial am I to others? Am I anani, someone that only thinks about themselves? Or am I there for my brothers? When someone messages you, Akhi, I need help moving. Good akhlaq dictates if you can help, and of course sometimes you cannot, that you go out of your way. This is if you want to be among the people that the Prophet ﷺ said, they are the best of people. You help them as much as you can. As much as you can. And you are there for them. There is a beautiful hadith. The Prophet ﷺ described a person who's haram for him to enter hellfire. It is haram for this person to enter hellfire. The Prophet ﷺ said, it is meaning that person will go where? To Jannah. Kullu hayinin, layinin, qareebin, sahlin. It is every easygoing person. Easygoing person. Doesn't make things difficult. Easygoing person. Soft and tender. Accessible to the people. Ask yourself, are you soft and tender? Or do you come across rough and tough? If that's the case, this is not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, a lot of times, people have a wrong understanding of masculinity. You gotta be strong. There was no one stronger than the Prophet ﷺ, and there was no one softer than him as well. So you have to come across as someone that is gentle. Allah loves those who are gentle, the way you speak. And you control how you are. And another thing, ikhwani fillah, is dalaqatul wajh. This is the third one. This is not about what you're doing. And it's not about what you're not doing. So we said, don't harm others. That's what you shouldn't do. There's something that you should do, 
be beneficial and helpful. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, خير الناس. The best of people and فعهم للناس is the one that is the most beneficial to others. So if you want to reach those heights, if you want to reach those heights of being the best of people, the most beloved to Allah, then remember that you should help others. Then the final one, ikhwani fillah, is almost a state of being. Talaqatul wajh. That you have an open face. That you are someone that you emanate positivity. You smile. The Prophet said, it is sunnah to smile. Right? You're not frowning all the time. Even when you're going through difficult times, you go out of your way to not show that to others. Right? You, you know how there is an incident that occurred, ikhwani fillah, that I believe someone told me that there was a brother, he came to a mosque and no one gave him salam. This was a revert brother. Or was it the Eid? I'm not sure. He came and he was a new Muslim. He didn't know anybody. No one gave him salam. Everyone busy doing their own thing with their families. And I'm not feeling, making, putting guilt on anyone because you know how Eid is, which are, it's, it's, you get really busy. But he's walking in the crowds and no one smiling at him. No one giving him salam. And he noticed it. He noticed it. And then I believe someone came to him and gave him salam. And he told him that. He said, you're the first person that came to me. And he really appreciated that. Now, how many people do you may come across that are having a bad day? And giving them that extra moment. Not the how are you's that we say passing. But we really mean it. Akhi, how are you doing today? How is your family? And giving that extra time to your brothers and sisters. If you can. When you come across, you give the person a proper salam. The Prophet ﷺ said, goodness is to give salam. The one you know and the one you do not know. We need to deal with each other in better ways, ikhwani fillah. Show each other love. The Prophet ﷺ said, Afshu salam abaynakum. Spread the greetings among each other. Spread the love among each other. And we need to help show that we are a community that loves each other, that has the best of akhlaq. People need to know that you are approachable. The Prophet was the most approachable. People need to know that you're accessible and able to help. They need to be able to come to you and talk to you. You shouldn't be the kind of person that comes into the masjid, leaves the masjid. You've been praying here for 10 years. You don't know anyone here. That's not, we should know each other. There is, there is, there is um, some small communities in Qasim, which is a state in, 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 in Saudi Arabia, where there are very small communities, small mosques. And after the Salah, they actually have a list of paper and they check who came and who didn't. And because it's such a small community, they will realize that such and such didn't come to the masjid and they'll go and visit his house and knock on his door. Is, are you okay? Right? This is the way the believers are. The Prophet ﷺ taught us how to be. So I want to sum it up, ikhwani fillah. If you want to know the virtue of having good character, then it is enough that the Prophet said it's what takes people to Jannah. It is enough that the Prophet wasallam said, you are the most beloved to me, those that have the best of akhlaq. And we said it means that number one, you don't harm others. Number two, you benefit others. Number three, you are someone that is open, easygoing, accessible, shows positivity and happiness like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Imagine the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sahaba are describing him and they say, never have I looked at him except he was smiling. And we know how much difficulty the Prophet ﷺ went through. How many of his children died. How many of his friends were killed. How many problems Rasulullah ﷺ was facing. Yet, never have I looked at the Prophet ﷺ except he was smiling. Smile in the face of your brothers. It is sunnah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. My brothers and sisters, when we are talking about having good character, I mentioned a few things. I mentioned general concepts of stay, not ensuring you're not harming others in any way, shape, or form, that you're helping others in, the, in, in any way that you can, and that, of course, can mean so many different things, and that you are someone that is easygoing, accessible, and uh, you are a positive individual like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was. But there is more to akhlaq, ikhwani fillah, and some of it, it goes back to you, and that is gratitude, for example, that you're grateful to Allah, number one, and you're grateful to those around you, those that help you, starting with your parents. It's also that you have patience in times of difficulty. It's also that you control your anger, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises them in the Quran, وَالْكَاظِمِينَ well, الْغَيْضِ Those that hide their anger and swallow it, and the best among those are those that, when they are angry, and they can act on that anger. They choose to hide it and not even show it. 
and those again, this is, there is a great reward in this. It is to not be argumentative. It is to not be uh, someone that is uh, angry. The Prophet, a man came to him among the Sahaba and said, Ya Rasulullah, advise him. And he said, La taghdab, do not get angry. La taghdab, do not get angry. Farad the mirror, and he said it many times. There are many things that come under having good akhlaq. Among that is being someone that is, like I mentioned earlier, accessible and approachable. It is to greet people. It is to visit the sick. It is to help others. It is to be aware of your neighbors. All of these come under good akhlaq. So how can one then uh, better work on their character? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in a hadith that good character is an acquired trait, not something you're just born with. And we know some people are born very gentle. And some people are born, they, are, they have patience, right? And they can, they can take more than others, right? And this is something Allah gifts people. So there is certain akhlaq that is innate within the person. Like you know someone is a quiet person, someone is a loud person. There's something that's innate with you. And this is, if, it's, if you're someone that easily angers, this is your test and you need to control that and work on that. And if someone, Allah granted you that you're a patient person, that's good. But there's also an acquired akhlaq that you work on it. That is a tahalluq that you al hilmu bi tahallum like the Prophet sallallahu said that you can work on yourself to become to have more forbearance to have more patience to be more grateful you can actually work on yourself and get there and this is what you need to do if you're the kind of person that doesn't smile a lot you can make yourself smile right and Allah will reward you for that right you go out of your way you go out of your way to embody the best type of character that you can and even Things like, wallahi, uh, being someone, there's a beautiful hadith, the hadith of Ibn al-Ghais, where a, a, uh, a group of, of men came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to visit him from far. And it, was, it was a delegation. And one of them, they all were, they, they came off their horses, and they were traveling for a long time, and they were excited to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they rushed to the Prophet. Why were they rushing? Because they loved the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They couldn't wait to see him. One of them didn't rush. He got off his horse, tied it. He went, changed clothes, showered, presented himself. And then he went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet praised that trait in him. That he's someone that takes his time. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam praised that and said that you have two types of characteristics that Allah loves. The point is, even sometimes being the kind of person that doesn't rush into decisions. That doesn't rush into things. These are all good traits. And do you want to know where you can learn the good traits from? From the book of Allah, the Quran. The Prophet Sallallahu akhlaq, when it was described by his wife Aisha and our mother, may Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala be pleased with her, radiallahu anha wa an abiha. She said, Kana khuluquhu al-Quran. His akhlaq was the Quran. So every good trait that you come across in the Quran, forgiving others, being merciful, being good to your parents, um, keeping the ties of kinship, saying good words, all of these traits that you find in the Quran, apply them to your life and be, be more like that. And inshallah ta'ala, you will be among those that have good akhlaq. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those. Allahumma kama ahsanta, akh, um, Allahumma kama ahsanta khalaqana, ahsin akhlaqana. Sallu ala nabiyyum wa kama amrakum Allah ta'ala haythu qal, inna Allahumma laikatu yisalluna ala nabiy. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu tislima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim inna ka hamidun majid. وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد المجيد اللهم لا تفرق جمعنا هذا إلا بذنب مغفور وسعي مشكور وعمل المتقبل المبرور اللهم حبيب إلى الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلى الكفر والفسوق والعصيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم اجعل خير عمرنا أواخره وخير عملنا خواتمه وخير أيامنا يوم لقاك فيه اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها اللهم هدنا إلى أحسن أخلاق فإنه لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وأقيم الصلاة